Welcome to part two in the series of Build Your Own Anglo-Saxon Minecraft Village. Last time we worked on some small houses. Today I'm going to show you how to build medium-sized houses. Let's get started. For medium-sized houses you will need logs of your choice, planks of your choice, stairs for roofing, slabs for roofing and floors, Pressure plates for spawn proofing on roofs, make sure that they match whatever you've used for your roofing material. Spruce doors for all the doors. Spruce trap doors for decorating along with fences and gates also for decorating. And optional stone and cobble for alternatives for floors. So let's get down to business. We're going to start with the smallest of the medium houses which is 6 by 8 blocks. Now these follow similar principles to the small houses but with some changes so let's get started. As usual in each corner a column of three logs and join up each of the columns with logs. So now the roofs and they're a little different from the roofs we've done for these houses. So along this top row of the columns and the row of logs, stairs of your choice and extend them out one at each end. Do that on the sides only. Now on top of our row of logs, a row of planks. But the ends, upside down, stair facing inwards, like that. Now on top of those planks, a row of stairs all the way along. And upside down stair and then another row of stairs. At the end, inward facing upside down stairs and two rows of planks. And finally top both those rows with stairs. One facing this way and the other this way. And extend them out at the end one block. That's our roof. Now back to the usual method for all of these. Move sheep. Fill in your walls remembering to leave spaces for doors and windows. Now you can put just planks in the middle or you can swap them out for extra columns, entirely up to you. And now run a row of planks along the top of your row of logs, fill in your gable end leaving a space for windows if you want to. And replace the floor with slabs or planks or stone. I'm using jungle slabs just because I like the change in wood colour. You can use whatever you like. Now even though this house is built on the flat and is on one level, it has got a second floor in it. So we'll put the second floor in then we'll worry about windows. So for this house come into the corner somewhere where you haven't made a lot of windows. One right way upstairs. One slab one right way upstairs and another right way upstairs. So you've got a little window under your stairs. This brings you up to your second floor which you make with wooden slabs. I'm using birch. And check that you've got easy access to the stairs. So we're going to add a door from the inside. Fences for windows. If you want to swap these out for glass, by all means do so. And of course, torches to light the place. On the outside we are doing typical job of fences and gates. You might like to run up an extra row of fences just beside the door. Let's fix up upstairs. I'm going to divide this up a little. 
oak planks to make two little bed alcoves. And I'm going to waterproof the ceiling. Now you could use whatever you used for your roof. I think the dark oak gets a little oppressive indoors. So I'm using upside down spruce stairs instead of dark oak stairs. And this little alcove I've got spruce slabs. I'm putting them above the beds as well. You will not take any suffocation damage if you sleep in a bed with the slab set up there. And I've got them above the stairs. Just check that you can easily come up and down your stairs. Not a problem. And torches for light. A little bit of storage. I can come back with carpets if I want to. This is basically done. And you can decorate in here as you like. So that's the smallest of our medium houses, six blocks by eight. Pretty basic. Uh, we'll add banners and decorate the rest of the village when we're done. So that's an even number, six across the front. What happens when it's an odd number? We've got a seven by nine here, that'll do. We're going to start exactly the same way. Column of three logs each corner and then join the logs up. Roof next, same as before. Row of stairs right the way along the sides. Extend it out one at each end. Planks on top of your row of logs with an upside down stair facing inwards at the end. Row of stairs on top of your planks. And a row of stairs set in one more, both with upside down stairs at the ends. Now go in one more and put a row of planks. And on top of those planks, a row of stairs. And between them at the front, an upside down stair. Now on top of that upside down stair, you're going to put a plank. And coming off the front of it, an upside down stair. Like that. Another plank behind it and a right way up stair behind that. Now if this house wasn't right up against a cliff, you'd do exactly the same thing on the other end. And you'd fill in any space in between with matching slabs. And of course, spawn proof any upper surface with a matching pressure plate. And there is our odd numbered roof. And now we just fill in the walls as normal leaving spaces for windows as we choose. I've replaced the floor. My preference is jungle slabs. Use what you like, but don't match it to the walls. I've put in a door. Now we're going to make access to the next floor. So, spruce stair, spruce slab. I do like spruce for stairs. You can use whatever wood you like, but again, I wouldn't match it to the walls. Right way upstairs, right way upstairs. Floor material of your choice. I'm using oak. And as usual with laying a floor, just check that you can still get up and down the stairs. Now on this floor we're going to do something a little different. We're going to add internal walls. That just waterproofs this level of the roof. Now I'm just going to add some planks there, leave a gap of two and some more planks for a cosy little sleeping area mm. and pop in some torches for light mm. and waterproofing for the rest of the roof and for the top just a row of slabs right the way along. Pop in some storage, maybe a carpet, some armor stand, whatever you'd like and fence posts for windows. We'll add the usual decorations and we'll be done with this. So 
So they're the basic principles. I'll build a few more houses and I'll show you some variations. So I definitely got building. <laughs> We've got a number of different sizes here. This is another 7x9. We've got 7x13. This is the long one. Um, some 8x9s, a 7x7 and a 7x10. Now as you can see I've yet again climbed them up terrain. It's not too hard to do. Um, same as with the small houses. I built on one level, dug out a bit and then put another structure the same height on top. I chose not to make it the same size and I've used the sloping back roofs. These are quite easy to do. I'll just take it off so I can show you. So you come up as you would normally and then where you want it to start going in just stairs along the front. Now I've put stairs at the back and then a slab roof just so it doesn't get too high but that gives this nice little rounded shape to the roof. Now this one there was a little ledge up there just big enough for a house and a space in the front and I thought let's push this let's see if you can get a cohesive house climbing up that sort of slope. Um, I quite like what I achieved let me know what you think in the comments but again it's the same sort of thing just start at the bottom with your columns and just take them up floor by floor and then this back one is basically half of a 7x10 just sitting on this top little ledge so we'll come in and have a look none of this is furnished by the way so we've got a little entrance way we have a little room here come up for another little room with sleeping quarters and then up again for yet another room and more sleeping quarters so it's not spacious but there's actually quite a bit in it by the way, um, horns on the gable ends, so extend it by one and then we'll take it off and I'll show you. Waste block, upside down stair, take off the waste block, upside down stair and put it in line with this line of the roof and spawn proof it with pressure plates. And there you have horns on the gable end. So we've got these two houses which are very similar to that one. They're very similar to each other. Let's make them a little different. Now this one has got a side door. So I'm going to take out that and that and we're going to make an annex. So we're going to extend it one, two, three and then I think we'll put four there. One, two, three, one, two, three, and on the fourth, one, two, three. Join them up. So we've got a little log framework. Now we're going to do the roof. We'll extend the stairs out to the side. Do the same here. I'm not sure if I'm happy with it being that close. We'll see. Right, blocks next. And upside down stairs on the outside. Bring this up to the next one and we'll make it join. So it's quite easy to join in an annex roof. And actually having said that, I don't know if I like that. Uh, we'll keep going, we'll see how we go. And because this is small, I think we'll just do one block in between instead of the three as we did over there. And slabs all the way along. What do we think?
I think we might do the same out this side. Right, I've put it out both sides, which has made it a substantially larger house. So on this one, I decided to leave the door exactly where it was and just make this like a little porch area. But with this one, it's actually a house extension. I'll show you, we'll go inside. So we've actually just got this extra little room here. As I said, none of this is furnished. And if we come up our stairs here, we've got um, the little room here, which was the same, but this now extends well beyond, well, this is basically a line of roof. We might just pop that in there. And we've got a little sleeping area just here. Oh, and narrow little storage area up here. So that's an easy way to change the basic little house, make it a bit bigger, make it a bit more interesting. Add an annex, as you saw, it's very easy to do. Especially when you do it correctly. <laughs> that's a sizable addition, but you can make changes to these houses with just small additions. So if we come over to this one, this house has got a little side exit. So here's the main entrance and here's the side door. We're going to add a little annex, a little porch just off the side here. So I'm coming out one, two, and I'm going up three blocks. I'll do the same here. I'm going to take out these stairs and I'm going to make a little log framework. And now extend them out to the side and we're coming up one more and instead of just making an A-frame we're going to go all the way around and back into the roof and then I've got dark oak slabs to finish it off. I think upside down stairs there and there's our little porch. Now we'll pop some decorations on it and I think we'll add some sides but I'm not going to add extra fencing there. I think that's fine as it is. But see that's just added an extra little bit of interest to this house. You could put another off this side if you wanted it symmetrical but it doesn't have to be. It makes sense for this little side entrance coming out into this yard area just to have that little bit extra onto it. So that's our medium sized houses. They can climb up and down elevations. You can make them with all sorts of variations. And you can extend them by adding annexes to make them a bit more interesting. Next time we'll be going on to the large houses over there. Um, in the meantime, if you want to know how to make the small starter homes, there should be an end card on the screen now. And I will see you with part three next time.